It's time again for Northwestern Outdoors Radio, the show covering fishing, hunting, and all sorts of outdoor recreation and destinations right here in the region you live and play in. Northwestern Outdoors is brought to you every week by Max Lure Company, makers of the world-famous wedding ring spinner, by Loophole, America's optics authority, and by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Northwestern Outdoors is also sponsored by Wallawa County in Northeast Oregon, where you'll find both nature and fun. By Chad's Coast White Sports Fishing, offering you the affordable Canadian fishing trip of a lifetime. And by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. So grab your fishing rod or hunting gear, load up the boat or lace up your boots, and let's head outdoors with your host, John Cruz. I finally got out there to do some fishing, and I'll tell you what, it was long overdue. This winter went on forever, and I'll be honest, I'm not much of an ice fisherman. So when I went down to some eastern Washington lakes and found a 100-yard stretch of water open, you bet. I sure did cast a spinner in there. And you know what? About 35 minutes later, I had caught seven trout, kept three, released the rest, and the next day went back with my best friend and some more ice had melted. And the two of us caught about 15 trout in about an hour and a half. Kept five of those. They're all going in the smoker. The sun was shining. The ice was melting. The the trout were biting. And it was a great way to kick off the spring fishing season. This week on the show, we are bringing you audio we recorded at the very well-attended Central Oregon Sportsman Show that took place a couple of weeks ago at the Deschutes County Fairgrounds in Redmond. We got to chat with some great guests to include one of my favorites, a true legend in the Northwest when it comes to walleye fishing on the Columbia River. His name, Ed Iman. He and Gordon Steinmetz literally pioneered walleye fishing in the Northwest, so it seems fitting that we would share some great advice from Ed about how to catch some of those big spring walleye and a bunch of those tasty males, too, out of the mighty Columbia right now. I just mentioned March trout fishing, and with that in mind, Lance Murs with Max Lure Company joins us to tell you about a great new trout catching lure they've come out with. It's called the Glowfly. After we talk about trout fishing lures with Lance, we'll talk honey with Dusty Crary. He's a longtime Montana outfitter based on the eastern end of the Bob Marshall Wilderness. He's got a lodge there, and he is also offering some great pack trips for hunters after deer and elk or summer riders hankering for some trout fishing, wildlife watching, hiking, and exploring in camping comfort. We'll jet from Montana to the coast when we chat with another one of my favorite fishing guides, Milt Gudgel. He is the longtime owner of Pacific Salmon Charters out of Ilwaco. It being spring, it's time to go fishing off the Oregon and Washington coast for sea bass and lingcod. Last but not least, we've got news from the courts about a well-known Washington fishing guide who just got fined $7,500 in federal court for catching and keeping endangered salmon on the Cowlitz River and about two outdoors television stars who got themselves into a heap of trouble in Wyoming when they put their illegal activities on the air for some sharp eyed ethical hunters to see. We've also got some upcoming events to tell you about taking place around the Northwest. And as usual, we've got our Sportsman's Warehouse Trivia Question of the Week where you get the chance to win the $25 gift card we give away every single week from America's premier outfitter. But before we get into all of this outdoors fun, it's time to get ready for spring turkey hunting. With us here to help you with that is Matt and Tom, the producers of Sportsman Spotlight. It's sponsored by Chad's Coastwide Sports Fishing, offering affordable saltwater fishing vacations out of Port Hardy, B.C. I'm heading up there again this summer and can't wait to do so. Find out more at his website, coastwidesportsfishing.com. This is Sportsman Spotlight with Matt and Tom. Spring turkey season is upon us, so I thought it'd be wise to reach out to Al Strupp as we prepare our hunting gear for the turkey season. Al, what types of calls do you like to use for spring turkey season? I use the multitude of mouth calls and slates and box calls. 
So I used everything. And what call would you say you used the most? No, I probably use mouth call more than I do anything. You got to be a good caller and you got to be able to be as close to invisible as you can be. And you want to have some good decoys on the ground that are as far as real looking as you can possibly get. And they're out there now, so... A lot better than back in my day when I used to hunt them. Al, I've noticed there's a lot of different types of decoys for turkeys. What kinds do you recommend? There's hens, there's Jake, there's full-size male gobblers, there's a different multitude of different ones, and then there's different manufacturers. Some of them are more realistic than others. Some of them are foam, some of them are collapsible, some of them are filled up with air. It just depends on what your desires are as far as what you want to try and use. Thanks for all your input, Al. Some of my important tips for spring turkey hunting are do your preseason scouting, learn their pattern, figure out where they like to roost, invest in a nice decoy or two, know your shotgun pattern, some guns pattern with different brands of shot shells or shot size, and also know your effective range. And it doesn't hurt to bring a rangefinder out with you. You just heard Sports and Spotlight. Thank you for tuning in. A quality and affordable fishing adventure is waiting for you off Vancouver Island with Chad's Coastwide Sports Fishing. Located in Port Hardy, British Columbia, you can drive or fly to your all-inclusive guided fishing vacation. Whether you're after big salmon, hard-fighting halibut, or a cooler full of red snapper and ling cod, you can catch it all here. Better yet, your lodging, meals, and fish processing are all taken care of. Want one more reason to go? The price. With the Canadian dollar exchange rate where it is right now, your U.S. dollar goes further. Space is limited, so go to CoastwideSportsFishing.com to book your trip. That's CoastwideSportsFishing.com for an incredible B.C. fishing adventure. Pheasants Forever is working hard every day to ensure there's more wildlife habitat for the future. To join us, go to pheasantsforever.org. I'm going to take you fishing, honey. You're going to love it. Going to get up before the sun. You're back with Northwestern Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz. We're broadcasting from the Central Oregon Sportsman Show, and we're meeting with legendary walleye guide, Ed Iman. He's based out of the Dalles, Oregon, and we've got a lot to talk about. Ed, welcome to the show. Uh, John's good to see you again. Having a nice little show over here at uh, Central Oregon. We are indeed, but let's talk about walleye fishing. You're giving seminars about that topic here at the Central Oregon Show, and it being March, I thought this would be a great time to fill our listeners in about the trophy walleye fishery going on right now in the Mid-Columbia River. What area of the river would you recommend fishing right now, and how big are those walleye going to be? Well, you know, the, the big hens are in right now. I think probably the best place to catch them right now is up in the Tri-Cities area. And then for, as far as eaters go, you know, from McNary Dam all the way down through to Bonneville Dam, there's great numbers of walleye. The guys are doing really well in the Boardman Umatilla area, and we're doing really well below the John Day Dam, Rufus down through to the Dells. Lots and lots of nice keepers. And sorting them out, getting rid of the little ones, getting rid of the real big ones, just keeping the ones that are three to five pounds, three to six pounds, something like that. I know that people come from all over North America to fish this time of year on the Columbia, hoping they're going to be the ones that are going to get that world record fish. Do you still think the world record is going to come out of the mid-Columbia? Well, I really think that it's going to come above McNary Dam. And the reason for that is, is there's no nets up there. We have native nets down below McNary, down through. And they don't catch many, but they are going to catch a lot of the bigger fish. And uh, they don't target fish them. That's a kind of a misnomer of what people have said about them. But, you know, nets are don't discriminate. They, they take everything. So they're here. The biggest fish that I've caught have all been up just below McNary Dam over around... Uh, uh, Umatilla and Boardman area back down in there and and we did have one that was potentially the world record that we turned loose so I know it's here we just got to find it again. Let's talk about tactics this time of year when it comes to this cold water Columbia River fishery in March and early April. Uh, how are you going about catching these fish? You know it's, a, it's the same techniques if we've got good fishing conditions by that I mean no wind my favorite way always to fish them is to jig fish them and there's lots of different techniques and, and different types of jigs and stuff out there. But the main thing is, is just working the jig slow and, and working it in and out of the pockets and uh, tipping it with a night crawler and just going to work. And the other technique that's one of my favorites is jig fishing too, but it's, it's using the blade baits. And those things are deadly. They're just deadly once you figure out how to use them. All right. And one other question, depth and colors. Well, the color, of course, silver, greens, they always work real well. Uh, a lot of stuff, uh, the jigs now, they're tying a little bit of, uh, of tinsel on them and flashaboo and stuff and, and using that, and uh, that works out really well. 
there's some guys that are making some custom tied jigs that seem to be working real well. But the thing with it is, is you know, you, you got to fish them to get them to bite. So I, I've always had real good luck with Whistler jigs or just lead-headed jigs. There's a guy in, up in Rufus up there that makes a big eye jig that works real good for this spring fishing. But they all work, and there's no, there's no two ways about that. Uh, it's just the technique is slow and, and working along. And, and, of course, now, you know, the braided line makes a big difference. And I use 20-pound braid, and then I come down and tie it into a barrel swivel and tie on a little piece of leader about, oh, 14 inches long, 18 inches long, and then go into a snap swivel. Or, or if I'm, that's for using with a, with a blade bait. For just using with a lead head, I just tie that leader directly into the lead head. And how deep are you fishing this time of year? Well, that depends on the fishermen. There's some deep pockets out there. I know some guys that are fishing down, you know, 50 feet and, and getting those bigger fish. They, a lot of them, they're going to start moving up now, but a lot of them haven't moved up to spawning depth now, you know. And they'll start moving in in the evenings, and they'll, they'll broadcast spawn and uh, then then move off again, you know. So. so are we talking anywhere, when it comes spawning time, are we talking like 15 feet? Well, f- 15 to 50. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to get down there pretty deep. And when you start fishing deeper like that, you know, it, it takes patience. So you got to, and again, you got to have a, a good quality rod. Uh, I'm using some uh, Daiwa products now. And uh, they've developed a really, really couple good uh, series of rods there for both working bottom walkers and spinners and jigs, you know. And, of course, bottom walkers and bait harnesses, or we call them spinner rigs here with a night crawler, they work any time. They work any time. If the wind starts to blow, you got to go to trolling, you know, and so they work really well then. All right. There's some great advice from Ed Iman. He's a fishing guide out of the Dalles. You can actually contact him if you want a trip by giving him a call at 541-298-3753. Again, that's 541-298-3753. We'll repeat that again in a couple of minutes. But before we do, I want to talk about some in-store seminars. You and some other fishing pros from around the Northwest are going to be giving this spring. Uh, Who's going to be with you? What are you going to be talking about? And where are you going to be at? Well, as far as as who's going to be with me, I've got a a list of guys. And basically, I try to team up with guys that are local to where the seminar area we've we've got. You know, I've got Bob Roberts and Austin Mosier and and Lance Mertz and and, uh, uh, Mike Gibney and and Bruce Warren. We've got got a team of guys put together. We go in and do these in-store seminars at different places. The first one we're going to do is going to be at Cabela's at U. Union Gap, and that's going to be on the 15th of April, and then on the 22nd of April we'll be at Bob Sporting's Goods in Longview, and and then the 29th we're at at Fishfield in uh, Portland. The 13th of May we're going to be hooked on toys in Wenatchee, and we're still working on the dates for the Tri Cities, but we'll have that worked out here in a couple of days, and and we'll be able to put that out there. What these are is is these are an event that the manufacturing sponsors team up with us and we go in and and we hold seminars or we also love to talk to people one-on-one and maybe can point them in the right direction as to how things are rigged and what tackle to use and we also have a a not really nice product raffle there Uh, so if you're in the location one of these events comes up come on by and say hi and visit with us for a while. All right, we'll contact those local stores for information exactly what time those events are going to take place on those dates. The Tri-Cities event is to be determined where that's going to take place. We don't know if that's going to be at Griggs or Ranch and Home or Sports' Warehouse, so stay tuned for that one. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, the names he rattled off, I, I know each and every one of these gentlemen, uh, folks like Austin Mosier have really got that Lake Roosevelt kokanee trout fishery dialed in. Lance Mers is a real expert on kokanee fishing throughout the northwest bruce warren knows his stuff inside and out when it comes to steelhead and salmon bob roberts is the same way and knows walleye as well and mr michael gibney is a very fine bass tournament angler and then throw an ed to the mix and you are going to learn a lot in a hurry at these in-store seminars and again great raffle prices too so one more time before we go here if you want to go fishing with ed or if you want to find out more about these in-store seminars give them a call it's ed i'm in guide service his phone number is 
298 3753. That's 541 298 3753. Ed, always a pleasure. Thanks, Johnny, and we'll see you down the road. Rise above us, got a bamboo pole and a leaky boat. It ain't much, but if you bail, it'll float. I'm gonna take you fishing, honey. You're gonna love it. Sportsman's Warehouse is America's premier outfitter and has the quality gear you need for hunting, fishing, camping, and more. Our knowledgeable and friendly staff will help you find the right product so you get the most out of your time in the field or on the water. In addition to stocking superior clothing and outdoor equipment, we offer in-store events and seminars so you can enjoy a successful adventure. With over 70 stores located in the United States, it's easy to find a Sportsman's Warehouse store near you. Find out more at sportsmanswarehouse.com. A quality and affordable fishing adventure is waiting for you off Vancouver Island with Chad's Coastwide Sports Fishing. Located in Port Hardy, British Columbia, you can drive or fly to your all-inclusive guided fishing vacation. Whether you're after big salmon, hard-fighting halibut, or a cooler full of red snapper and ling cod, you can catch it all here. Better yet, your lodging, meals, and fish processing are all taken care of. Want one more reason to go? The price. With the Canadian dollar exchange rate where it is right now, your U.S. dollar goes further. Space is limited, so go to CoastwideSportsFishing.com to book your trip. That's Coastwide Sports fishing.com for an incredible bc fishing adventure today's line of portable camp stoves from camp chef have come a long way from your father's propane stove featuring matchless ignition more cooking power and in some cases a built-in grill or extra burner look for the complete line of mountain series stoves at your local sporting goods store or online at campchef.com camp chef the way to cook outdoors you're back with more of the great outdoors on northwestern outdoors radio with john cruz it's time for another Max Minute. Fish on. Brought to you every week by Max Lure Company. With us here again is Lance Murrs. Lance, it is Mark. And trout is on the brain of a lot of folks. A lot of folks are venturing out into lakes west of the Cascade Mountains, and they're trolling for fish out there. There's other lakes that have already opened uh, east of the Cascades in Washington. And, of course, there's year-round lakes throughout the northwest, too, where the ice is coming off. Anglers are hitting the water. What's an offering? you'd recommend to get some trout in the boat? Well, I'm really excited this year, John, about the Maxlure Glowfly. It's a new lure by Maxlure, and it looks like a smaller version of a wedding ring. It's got a hard metal blade to it, but the great thing about this is it's got a glow hook, and on the outside of that glow hook is got fly material, so it looks like a, a glowing fly in the water. This is a really good looking offering i could see this catching a lot of trout again folks it's got that metal indiana blade it's got beads and it's got of course that little wedding ring bead in the middle and again you got the glow hook you've got the fly material this looks like a trout catching machine it is and we've specifically targeted this so they come in three different colors and two different sizes size six and a size eight they're perfect all right, so one more time with the lure name and where do folks find it? The Max Lure Glowfly. You can find it at a retail store near you or on the website, maxlure.com. It's brand new. Be the first one to catch trout with the Max Lure Glowfly. You will be the envy of all the other fishermen around you. Hey, we're talking to Lance Mers today with Max Lure Company about a brand new lure that's just slaying the trout out there on area lakes. It's the Smile Blade Spin Drift Trout Lure from Max Lure Company. Lance, what makes this lure so special? Well, we've got our Max Lure patented Smile Blade, our high UV components, and the Spin Drift hook, which gives it a great corkscrew action in the water. There you go, folks. All three components help you catch more fish. The Smile Blade Spin Drift Trout Lure, only for Max Lure Company. Want to earn a serious reward? You can, and all you need is a fishing rod. There's money to be made catching northern pike minnow. We'll pay you cash to catch them. Pike minnow eat our salmon and steelhead, and that's no good. The season starts May 1st, runs through September, and the more fish you catch, the more you earn. How much money can you make from this program? Well, last year, one angler earned a cool hundred grand. Find out more at pikeminnow.org. That's pikeminnow.org. Go ahead, collect your reward. A quality and affordable fishing adventure is waiting for you off Vancouver Island with Chad's Coastwide Sports Fishing. Located in Port Hardy, British Columbia, you can drive or fly to your all-inclusive guided fishing vacation. Whether you're after big salmon, hard-fighting halibut, or a cooler full of red snapper and ling cod, you can catch it all here. Better yet, your lodging, meals, and fish processing are all taken care of. Want one more reason to go? The price. With the Canadian dollar exchange rate where it is right now, your U.S. dollar goes further. Space is limited, so go to CoastwideSportsFishing.com to book your trip. That's Coastwide Sports fishing.com for an incredible bc fishing adventure 
At Loophold Optics, they guarantee performance. Those other optics companies, they just warranty failure. That's why every Loophold product has a lifetime guarantee. Think of it as a warranty you'll never need to cash in on. Find out more at Loophold.com. You're back with Northwestern Outdoors Radio. I'm John Cruz. We're broadcasting from the floor of the Central Oregon Sportsman Show in Redmond, Oregon. It's been a great show, and one outfitter that caught my attention here is Seven Lazy P Outfitting, LLC. They will take you into Montana's Bob Marshall Wilderness for hunting, for hiking, for fishing, for wildlife viewing, or just relaxing on horseback. To tell us more about it is Dusty Crary. Dusty, welcome to the show. Oh, good morning. How's everybody doing? Dusty, we are doing great. And I really like what you have to offer. And your operation is a little bit different from some of the other operations that are out there. And I guess it starts with your lodge and where your lodge is located. Why don't you tell our listeners about that? Well, we're uh, about 28 miles west of Shoto, Montana, which is about 60 miles west of Great Falls, and we're located right on the Rocky Mountain Front, which is the east slope of the Rockies just south of Glacier National Park in Montana. The lodge was built in uh, 1931 is when this operation started, and a fellow by the name of Jack Baker came up the Teton there and started an outfitting business. Had a lot of courage starting in 1931 in the heart of the Depression, but it's been in uh, continuous operation from that time and been added on to and uh, evolved over time. My family and I are the fourth owners of it. Uh, the folks we bought it from, I worked for and, and did a lot of of uh, pack trips and that sort of thing. They had it for 54 years, so it hasn't changed hands much. You are located literally at the end of the road, right where the wilderness begins. Is that right? Right. We're right on a trailhead. There's uh, right off the road uh, on the middle fork of the Teton River. And we literally, when you get on your horse at the hitch rail, we ride around the corner of the tack shed and you're on the trail. There's no, uh, we don't have to trailer stock and, and go to a different trailhead. It's really pretty unique that way. And we, we can actually work three trailheads on the east side of the Bob Marshall Wilderness and never have to put a wheel under a horse. Uh, we're pretty fortunate that way. Well, I like that a lot. It sounds like folks, even if they're not into horseback riding, they could come stay at your lodge and probably do some fishing, some hiking right out your door. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunities right there. We uh, In the shoulder seasons, especially uh, May, uh, early September, is a great time to come stay at the lodge. You know, the weather's nice usually. We'll uh, host some weddings there occasionally, a few family reunions, uh, just some weekend getaways, even from folks fairly local, close by. We're on Airbnb. We get a lot of folks stop in for one or two nights as they're transitioning from Yellowstone Park to Glacier and vice versa. So that's picked up quite a bit. That's a good way to find us too. All right. Well, let's transition from the Seven Lazy P Outfitting Lodge to some of your wilderness packing hunts, because I know that's what a lot of people at this show are here to talk to you about. And in your hunts, it's not just rifle hunts. You've got archery hunts. You've got uh, rifle hunts. Do you do muzzle loader as well? We don't do muzzle loader. <laughs> For the sake of that, there's no separate muzzleloader season in Montana. Now, if you certainly we would entertain if someone was uh, partial to that weapon choice, we'd absolutely, uh, especially our early rifle bugle season hunts, it'd be a great hunt for a muzzleloader to come on. But the Seven Lazy P has always been, this is a pack station. This is a Bob Marshall Big Wilderness Country pack station. And it, the focus has always been getting to the interior, taking folks to the Bob Marshall wilderness and uh, getting to those interior spots in the in the fall we've got three permitted hunting camps that we can operate out of uh, one we use primarily for our archery hunts and then uh, something else a little bit unique in the the uh, wilderness areas of uh, montana We've got that early bugle season rifle hunts, uh, start the 15th of September every year. And those hunts, they only take place within Wilderness Boundary on the west side of the Continental Divide. And we have two camps that we run those hunts out of. And uh, we'll take you in there on a, on a nine-day pretty epic adventure in there. 
So I'm assuming that these camps, you've got your canvas wall tents, you've got your stoves in there to keep you warm, you got the, the food that's going to be there. I'm guessing there might even be, well, some libations that you can enjoy after a hunt. Are these guided hunts or these self-guided hunts from the camp? Well, we do a little of both. Um, these are guided hunt, uh, especially those early rifle camps. These are very much the classic western wall tent camp that, that people really go in there to see and enjoy and experience. They're very well appointed camps, you know, excellent equipment. I have uh, some fantastic, we call them wilderness chefs. We we really try to take care of the things that, that are in our control and, and excellent meals great hospitality you bet you know if someone wants to have a beer or cocktail that's certainly welcome you know only that experience you can get in a wilderness camp where you know your cell phone doesn't work you're not getting emails you can see the the change come over people in about four days when they they uh, they really let down they relax uh, they really take on a different demeanor a lot of times and you can only get that when you can really unplug from everything I love it. Absolutely love it. And one other thing we need to mention here, I know that most folks are coming for elk, but you offer mule deer and whitetail deer hunts too, don't you? Yeah, we do. This is primarily, those early hunts are really going to be just for elk. But later in the season, uh, we certainly have some different hunt opportunities for uh, mule deer, combination hunts, some limited entry uh, in Montana's general season, which is uh, end of October to Thanksgiving weekend. We have people put in for some limited entry tags for some, you know, really good opportunities for trophy class animals on some private land and public land and of course our archery hunts as well we've got unguided archery hunts that that a lot of the archery hunters really like and uh, it's a staffed camp with a cook and a packer it's just so it's fully equipped and and all your meals and food are provided it's just unguided so that's been really popular with archery hunters as well all right again we're talking to Dusty Crary he's with Seven Lazy P Outfitting he will take you on some pack trips into the Bob Marshall Wilderness in Montana let's talk about outside of hunting season because during the summer months you're taking folks on pack trips into the bob marshall too uh, but it's for entirely different reasons yeah the summer trips are are really fun and enjoyable too and you can you know appeals to a lot wider variety of people we get a lot of families a lot of couples come on those trips and We go to the very best, you know, iconic destinations in the Bob Marshall Wilderness, take a lot of seven, eight-day pack trips, which is a fair time commitment this day and age, but you really need to invest that much to give the wilderness its due, and... uh, We'll go to the South Chinese Wall, the North Wall, Trilobite Range, and we've got, uh, which are just really epic, high country, really beautiful alpine, you know, high alpine trips. We've got uh, trips that focus a lot more on fishing on the North Fork of the Sun River, the Middle Fork of the Flathead, for those that really want to spend more time fly fishing than they do want to be up in the rocks in the alpine area hiking. Really fun and easy dry fly fishing. We've also got got a couple trips that really work well if folks like to hike don't really want to go horseback but don't want to have to carry a full load we uh, we can do those too we've got a couple trips that are really lend themselves well to that where folks want to hike with a day pack and then we carry all the gear and and have the meals and all that as well so we've got a lot of options for folks if they'd like to uh, consider going on a pack trip in the bob marshall excellent stock and equipment in our in our staff is just really key we we get you know riding experiences not necessary at all we we take care of that and folks have a great time all right we have got to go but as you can hear uh, lots of opportunities in the bob marshall wilderness if you want to unplug and go ride go hike go fish go hunt check out the website for seven lazy p outfitting the website is very simple seven lazy p.com that's seven lazy the letter p.com check them out and make your reservation i think you're going to enjoy the ride dusty thanks for telling us all about this on northwestern outdoors radio thank you very much and uh, hope to hear from some of you folks
Good hunters know before you take that shot, you've got to see the whole picture. Now, the best way to do that is with a spotting scope, binoculars, or a rifle scope, but it's got to be from Leupold. Now, Leupold is a Northwest company with a reputation that stretches across the world for making superior optics, the kind of optics that allow you to see what you need before making that stock or pulling that trigger. Look for Leupold optics at your local Cabela store, Dick's Sporting Goods, or online at Leupold.com. Leupold, America's optical authority. Backcountry hunters and anglers, the men and women working hard to keep public lands in public hands. Check us out at backcountryhunters.org. Please, DNR, don't stop my car. I've got too many fishing back. Please, DNR, stay too long at the bar. When I counted them, I must have lost track. Well, we're starting off this segment with the song, Please, DNR, Don't Stop My Car, written by Peter Block, to intro a story about a well-known Northwest fishing guide who just pled guilty to a violation of the Endangered Species Act. His name? Bill Swan, a.k.a. Swanee. A few years ago, Bill Swan, the owner of Swanee's Guided Fishing, was one of the biggest names in the Northwest fishing scene. He was a high-profile pro staffer for Potsky Baits out of Ellensburg, quoted in regional outdoors magazines. He was a frequent guest on outdoors radio shows and one of the most booked guides on Washington's Cowlitz River for both salmon and steelhead. That all changed. In October of 2014, when photos were posted on social media of Swan with corporate clients from Potsky Baits posing with dead wild coho salmon, which are illegal to keep because they are listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act. What was worse was the fact that Swan cut the adipose fins off the salmon. You see, the adipose fins, when they're present, that's how you know they're a wild fish. But Swan cut them off, told his clients to record them as hatchery fish on their catch record cards, and then the clients posted more photos on social media. The Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife launched an investigation which proceeded at what can kindly be described as at a glacial pace. The case was eventually turned over to the federal government, and special agents from the National Marine Fisheries Service took the lead. Charges were eventually brought forward, and this month in a plea agreement, Swan pled guilty to one count of violating the Endangered Species Act. Swan received no jail time, and believe it or not, gets to keep his guide license, but he is going to have to pony up $7,500 to pay the fine handed down in federal court in Tacoma. The fallout for Swanee, though, has gone far beyond that. Potsky dropped all associations with Swan right after the story became public in 2014, and when contacted at that time for comment by yours truly, spokesman Chris Schaefer replied, they had no comment because Swan was no longer associated with their company. As for Swan's current sponsors, it turns out at least one of the few sponsors he claims he has on his website is not a sponsor at all. That would be Edge Rods out of Woodland, Washington. When contacted, the president of the company replied, We don't sponsor any guide. A lot of guides fish our rods, but it has no correlation to sponsorship or how we feel about them. And being conservationists at heart, we don't condone any illegal behavior. The outdoors media has also kept Swan at arm's length, but with few exceptions, didn't say much on the air or in print, waiting for charges to be filed or not by the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. However, Swan saw his invitations for quotes and appearances evaporate like a shallow seasonal stream under the hot desert sun. And now, with this sentence, outdoors media outlets are finally sharing what Swan himself acknowledges is the truth. A well-respected guide broke the law in a way responsible anglers would never dream of doing and i'm pretty sure this is not going to be very good for business on his end in the years ahead swanee isn't the only high profile outdoorsman with his name out there for the wrong reasons though oh no a couple of outdoors television show hosts find themselves in a similar pot of hot water from wyoming fish and game we learned that agency just finished up a poaching case in court on march 13th ricky mills and jimmy duncan pled no contest to numerous wildlife violations and they got themselves thirty thousand dollars in fines 
Mills and Duncan are from Bedford, Kentucky, and the case started with a tip from a concerned Wyoming citizen who watched the two defendants on a hunting show called Hunting in the Sticks that aired on the Hunting Channel. In the episode Western Redemption, Mills and Duncan are seen harvesting two bull elk in Wyoming. The sharp-eyed citizen, though, noticed that the area they claimed to have killed their elk did not match the area of their licenses. He contacted Wyoming Fish and Game and Mike Alebrock, the investigative supervisor for Wyoming Game and Fish, said their agency teamed up with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Fish and Game investigators from Kentucky and through search warrants and interviews were able to make a case and both men confessed. When asked why he thought the two committed their crimes, Alebrock replied, I believe the two defendants were driven to get kill shot footage for the television show and that resulted in their making bad decisions. Bad decisions indeed. It turns out that the two had elk licenses, but they killed them in areas where they weren't supposed to be shot. It was also discovered the two defendants attempted to do the same thing in 2013, and Duncan harvested an antelope buck in 2013 without a license. In addition to their hefty fines, Mills and Duncan were also suspended for 15 years from hunting and trapping, and they are now entered into the Wildlife Violator Compact. That means that they can't hunt in most of the states here in the United States. The elk mounts from both Duncan and Mills were also forfeited. As you might imagine, this is affecting their ability to continue their television show. As a matter of fact, as of last week, their Facebook page was down, and their website expresses regret for their actions and an announcement that Hunting in the Sticks is pausing its operations. Not only that, they are no longer listed on the Hunt Channel programming schedule. Cautionary tales from people who apparently thought that they were above the law. And with that, let's head back to the floor of the Central Oregon Sportsman Show. Next up on Northwestern Outdoors Radio, we're catching up with our old friend Milt Gudgel with Pacific Salmon Charters out of Ilwaka, Washington. It's springtime, and that means it's time for sea bass and lingcod. Tell our listeners a little bit more about the opportunities available off the mouth of the Columbia River. All right, good morning, John. It's good to see you. Yes, the opportunity here will start last week in March. We're going to be looking for those lingcod. There's lots of them around at that time of year, lots of bass. The only thing that's different this year from previous years is they've reduced the limits on black rockfish in Oregon down to six fish. You may have another rockfish in your possession, but that's all. Canaries are still able to take and various other species. But the lingcod are very, very productive fishing in here in March, April, May, and even in June. So turning our attention back to lingcod, what is the limit for lingcod? And, and on average, how big are the lingcod you're catching? Well, first of all, the limit's two fish. In Oregon, I believe it's still 22 inch minimum size. They did something screwy in Washington. They took the size limit off from lingcod. I, I don't understand that. And either do I. You know, they said, well, if you turn them loose, they, they have a really good survival rate. Yeah, but there's still a mortality on those fish, and they don't seem to recognize that. But the fishing is very good. When we're fishing in the early season, we will be down off Oregon. We use bait, and we'll be fishing the reefs, and it's very, very productive, very productive. Generally, we'll get our lingcod before we catch our sea bass. Well, that was my next question. Are you fishing for them in the same place or different locations? Basically in the same place, but we have spots where you can pull up there, you can put your finger in the water, and a bass will bite your finger. I mean, there are that many of them in some particular spot. All right, folks, if you want to get into some rockfish or sea bass this spring, and if you want to get into some lingcod too, and they are some of the tastiest fish you're ever going to reel up out of the ocean, give Milt a call. You can contact him through PacificSalmonCharters.com. That's his website, PacificSalmonCharters.com. He's been doing this a long time. He's got a fleet of boats that will take you out there in the water, and he's got a lot of repeat customers because he knows what he's doing and he offers a great day. Milt, thanks as always. We appreciate it. Thank you, John. It's always good to talk to you.
Looking for the ultimate cooking machine for your backyard or patio? Look no further than Camp Chef's new pellet grill and smoker. With user-friendly features like an auto ignition, digital readouts, and internal meat temperature sensors, it's easy to smoke the tastiest salmon, ribs, brisket, and turkey you'll ever eat. And an innovative system makes cleanup a snap. Everyone will want the food you're cooking on your Camp Chef pellet grill and smoker. The quality smoker that's second to none. Find out more at CampChef.com. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. The road is calling you to experience one of Oregon's seven wonders, the Wallawas. So grab your family and spend some time exploring Northeast Oregon's Wallawa County. Visit the state park at the head of Glacier Carved Wallawa Lake. Travel the Hell's Canyon Scenic Byway. Feel the pioneer spirit. Nez Perce history and see our western arts and bronzes. Ascend to the top of Mount Howard on the tram and you'll see why Wallawa County is one of Oregon's most scenic and adventurous vacation wonders. This summer, take the road that leads to wonders. It begins at WallawaCountyChamber.com. At Loophold Optics, they guarantee performance. Those other optics companies, they just warranty failure. That's why every Loophold product has a lifetime guarantee. Think of it as a warranty you'll never need to cash in on. Find out more at Loophold.com. Sportsman's Warehouse is America's premier outfitter and has the quality gear you need for hunting, fishing, camping, and more. Our knowledgeable and friendly staff will help you find the right product so you get the most out of your time in the field or on the water. In addition to stocking superior clothing and outdoor equipment, we offer in-store events and seminars so you can enjoy a successful adventure. With over 70 stores located in the United States, it's easy to find a Sportsman's Warehouse store near you. Find out more at sportsmanswarehouse.com. One more time this week for Northwestern Outdoors Radio with John Cruz. Let's run through some upcoming events for you. If you're into bird watching, now is the time to go to Southwest Idaho's Fort Boise Wildlife Management Area near Parma to see thousands of snow geese stopping over before they continue their migration north. According to Idaho Fish and Game, up to 60,000 of the loud geese will take off around sunrise to feed, and then they come back to the wildlife area in large groups in mid-morning. Better still, a new elevated viewing platform has been built with spring geese Goose watchers in mind. Another event you might want to check out is the 55th annual Driftwood Show and Glass Float Roundup. That's taking place April 1st and 2nd at the historic Grayland Community Hall. It attracts natural beach art enthusiasts and glass float collectors every year to the Westport Grayland area for fun and prizes. The glass float hunt itself is on the beach at Grayland. Another event is the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife Turkey Hunting Clinic taking place April 1st at the White River Wildlife area. If you are ages 8 to 17, you're invited to learn how to safely and successfully hunt turkeys through this hunter education program. There is a registration limit and pre-registration is required. Go to the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife website to find out more. Just go to the ODFW calendar page. If turkey hunting, beach combing, and bird viewing sounds like too much effort, you can always just lift a frosty one with a friend for a good cause in Eugene. That's right. The Backcountry Hunters and Anglers Eugene Pint Night is taking place March 31st from 6 to 9 p.m. at Hop Valley Brewing. It is open to the public. Another Backcountry Hunters and Anglers event is their annual rendezvous. This is taking place April 7th through the 9th. It's going to be at the Missoula Holiday Inn. It is going to be a ton of fun. I attended one of these a couple years ago in Spokane and was very impressed. You can find out more about the annual BHA Rendezvous in Missoula at backcountryhunters.org. And one last banquet to tell you about is the Coastal Conservation Association Banquet and Auction taking place at the Cashmere Riverside Center in Cashmere, Washington on March 31st. Doors open at 5 p.m. Local sporting goods stores are selling tickets, and I'm looking forward to seeing you there. And now, it's time for your trivia question of the week. Right now is a great time to head to the Oregon coast to see whales as they migrate from Mexico back to Alaska. In fact, the week of March 25th through the 31st is the Spring Whale Watching Week where volunteers at Oregon State Parks and viewpoints up and down the coast will educate you about the whales and help you spot them. Here's your question, though. What kind of whales are you most likely to see right now within eyesight of shore? If you know, go to our Facebook page at Northwestern Outdoors Radio, look for the posts and give us your answer there, or 
Go to our website at northwesternoutdoors.com. Go to our contact us page and let us know there. One lucky winner will not only get a $25 gift card from Sportsman's Warehouse, but they'll get a chance to use it at the big, and I mean really big, spring sale that's kicking off on April 1st. Look for the ad on that sale in your local paper on March 31st. We need to wrap up things for this week, but if you get a chance, go to our sister show website, americaoutdoorsradio.com, and look for a station near you. It's another hour of great outdoors programming. You can also hear both shows on WRVO Radio. The website for that, renoviolaoutdoors.com. I've got my first fishing trip in, and if you haven't done so yet, I think it's your turn now. It's also time to get ready for turkey hunting and test the trails with your boots, your bikes, and don't forget to bring the binos to check out the wildlife. Until next time, take care, God bless, and make it a point to spend some time outdoors. Outdoors.